Finally, the Super Bowl has come back. Warning, a hostile parasite has landed on planet Earth. Seek immediate shelter. Ensure food and water supplies are stocked and ensure your shelter has functioning air filtration units. The military has been deployed, but it is recommended you arm yourselves and prepare for the worst. Do not open your shelter until instructed otherwise. Do not listen to their voices. Do not be afraid. I am peace. I am salvation. So, on a scale of 1 to grave mind, how screwed are we in this scenario? Well, allow me to quell or amplify your fears by answering that very question. Many moons ago, I made a video where I tried to simulate as realistically as possible what would happen if the flood came to Earth today, how the world would respond, how the flood would spread through modern means, etc, etc. But today, I want to take a more in-depth look at this scenario and investigate whether hardware used by modern militaries, and in some cases civilians as well, would be sufficient to quell a flood outbreak were it to happen today. So lock your doors, check your air filters, and fuel up those flamethrowers. The Flood Apocalypse of 2023 has arrived. If a flood outbreak were to occur today, militaries would of course be our first point of defense. And so to understand whether we would actually be able to hold back the parasite today, we need to take a look at the tools that modern militaries would use to combat them. Now, when it comes to a target like the Flood, the weapons themselves don't matter quite as much as the type of ammo they fire, within reason. Of course, a flamethrower is always going to be king, but flamethrowers aren't exactly standard issue. Ballistics are, and although the calibers of rounds do vary quite a lot between Western and Eastern militaries, the type of ammunition doesn't tend to. So, for Western militaries, standard issue NATO assault rifle ammo is the tried and tested 556 by 45 mm and over in the East, militaries nowadays tend to favour the lighter 545 by 39 mm AK round. Now, both are pretty similar cartridges, honestly, and based on my research, the most widely used version of both 545 and 556 is full metal jacket. And this is the first problem that we run into. FMJ poses quite an issue when it comes to countering the flood because those rounds have an emphasis on penetration. So if you cast your mind back to Halo 1, you'll remember that the super ultra turbo powerful sniper rifle actually does nothing to the floods. I mean, it barely even scratches them. And the reason for that is because its rounds over penetrate. Now, granted, the sniper does fire armor-piercing rounds, so yeah, it's a little bit of an extreme example, but when it comes to combating the Flood, thanks to their makeup mostly just being rotten biomass, efficiency is all about maximum impact damage over penetration potential. To take down a combat form, hitting specific organs or penetrating highly rated armor isn't really that important. Annihilating its biomass is. And so, when you have an army that are mostly kitted out with rounds specifically designed to penetrate, you start to run into a little bit of a problem. So, moving up the calibers, we have what I'm going to call the Battle Rifle Caliber. These are fairly common rounds that are substantially bigger than 5.56 and 5.45. For Eastern militaries, we have the infamous 762 by 39 mil round, arguably the most fired ammunition in human history that gained insane popularity with the rise of the AK-47. And then on the western side, we have the 7.62x51mm round, which is commonly referred to as 7.62 NATO. Now, again, based on my research, the most commonly distributed style of both 7.62 Soviet and NATO is once again full metal jacket. Now, granted, their increased size and power does make like 7.62 FMJ much more lethal than 5.56 or 5.45, but still, they're likely to run into the same problems as their smaller cartridges. However, what's interesting is that we actually have a direct point of reference for 7.62 NATO in the Halo universe. The assault rifle fires it. More specifically, the MA5 series of assault rifles tends to fire 7.62x51mm FMJ armor-piercing rounds, and despite that, 
It's a pretty effective weapon against most flood forms, but I think the reason for that is more so because of the sheer number of rounds the AR can dump down range. I mean, the MA5C kind of, but more specifically, the MA5B of Halo 1 is nothing short of a bullet hose, so regardless of the rounds over-penetrating their infected target, so many bullets are hitting the flood form and so much meta impact damage is being done to their rotting biomass that they can't help but crumble. And you know what? I think modern infantry's greatest chance at beating the flood would be to employ weapons that work in a similar fashion. Your greatest chance at beating the flood is by subscribing right now. Look, there's only another 193,214 days until the flood make landfall on Earth. And trust me when I say that they are going to give you a free pass from infection if you're subscribed to yours truly. But, oh. Oh, also make sure you follow me on Twitter as well. Sorry, that was the that was the grave mind speaking, not me. Now, many Western militaries have some sort of 762 NATO belt-fed LMG that's distributed as standard in units, from the M240 to the L7A2. And then over in the East, they have a similar sort of arrangement, but with a slightly larger round, 762 by 54 MMR which is fired by LMGs like the PKP and the PKM. Now, I think with the combination of the size of these rounds and also just the sheer number of them that machine guns are able to dump down range, the rounds themselves having high penetration isn't actually going to be the biggest problem. You know, if a combat form gets hit with 15 of these big ass rounds all over its body, uh, it's going to crumble like an old biscuit regardless of the type of rounds hitting it. The problem is though, GPMGs like the M240 and the PKM aren't in the hands of every soldier. They're present, but I don't think they'd be common enough to allow a force to combat a large scale outbreak like, for example, the one that happened in Voy. That said though, conical bullet firing weapons aren't the only kinds of weapons that modern militaries use. In fact, there's a type of weapon that is proven to be hyper, hyper effective against the flood that's pretty cheap and rather commonplace among militaries and also civilians, shotguns. Now, we all know how effective Halo's 8-gauge shotgun is against the Flood. I mean, hell, the Flood may as well be allergic to the damn thing. And although standard-issue shotguns nowadays aren't quite as powerful as an 8-gauge shotgun, I think they'd still absolutely get the job done. As we know, the name of the game in Combat in the Flood is Impact Distribution, hitting as much of their body as possible. And very little can get that done, like good old-fashioned buckshot. 12 gauge 70mm buckshots are thankfully standard issue in both Western and Eastern militaries and would probably be the most efficient yet accessible cartridge to use against the flood. And they're also really commonly owned by civilians as well, which would be a great hand if, like in almost every zombie story ever, militaries end up getting overrun. Buckshot is so effective because each shell fires roughly 8 plus pellets in a dispersed fashion, which spreads the impact all all across the target's body, making it very easy to take down any kind of enemy composed of rather weak, rotting biomass. In Halo, of course, the shotgun has always been the bane of the flood, and although I do think that that effectiveness would transfer over to real life, you do have to bear in mind that Halo's shotgun isn't a typical shotgun. It's 8 gauge, not 12 gauge, and it fires magnum buckshot shells over regular buckshot, so it's definitely a lot more powerful than like a standard issue earth military shotgun nowadays, but I think that our 12 gauge shotguns would still be really effective against the parasite. However, buckshot wouldn't be the only efficient shell. As we all know very well, the flood are highly susceptible to extreme heat and fire. And there's one very iconic shotgun shell that exists in real life today that I think would finally find its hyper niche use case against the flood, Dragon's Breath. These cartridges fire birdshot pellets, but also ignite shards of magnesium that essentially turn them into incendiary shells with a burn rate of up to 5,000 degrees. If you ask me, that's basically the perfect anti-flood 12 gauge shell. But as you'd expect, these shells are only really owned by civilians. Militaries aren't outfitted with incendiary shotgun shells for a whole litany of reasons that I don't think I need to go into. Some militaries, however, do still distribute flamethrowers among troops. Now, we all know how effective or how theoretically effective the flamethrower should be against the flood. 
Halo 3 did not exactly show this off very well, but based on my research, the only major military nowadays to still actively use flamethrowers is the Chinese military. They train with the Type 74 flamethrower, and I don't think I really need to go into much detail as to how effective this thing would be against the Flood. To sum it up very shortly, hot knife, butter. Something that I didn't know until researching for this video, however, is that flamethrowers are, in most places at least, legal to own by civilians, so take that as you will. So in terms of infantry, both the West and the East best bets would be to make heavy use of shotguns, specifically firing buckshot shells, not slugs, anything that's fire or heat based, and also anything that can dump a large number of rounds downrange as fast as possible. LMGs, GPMGs, and to go a bit of a ridiculous step further, kind of, miniguns would be perfect for this. As important as initial impact damage over penetration is, the biggest factor in putting down almost every flood form is spreading the damage out across their biomass as much as possible. Weak spots aren't really that important when it comes to fighting the flood. The quantity of hits matter more than the quality. However, there's something of a secret source that we haven't mentioned yet that theoretically would be the absolute perfect type of round to use against the Flood that, as far as I'm aware, has never been used against the Flood in the Halo universe despite that. Hollow Points. Hollow Point rounds immediately expand upon impact, sacrificing penetration potential for a significantly more lethal initial impact, which is precisely what you need to counter the Flood. Now, here's the interesting thing. Expanding bullets are explicitly banned from combat zones in the real world. However, they are still used by military police and base defense personnel within the US military, and I'd assume that a similar thing is the case for Eastern militaries as well. Further, hollow points are actually a really commonly owned civilian round. There's a lot of them in circulation. So theoretically, if modern research teams realized how effective they are against the flood, it wouldn't be out of the question for militaries to suddenly start firing it. You know what? I reckon an entire military kitted out with rip rounds in particular wouldn't have much of an issue quelling at least a smaller scale flood outbreak. Okay, so when the flood outbreak does occur, chances are you're going to be hunkered down for quite some time, so you need to find a way to blend in whilst also not sacrificing comfiness. And you know what? There's no better way to do that than with my Flood-themed PCs made in partnership with Apex Gaming PCs. They're currently having a big site-wide sale, so my super powerful Pureform, Gravemind, and Primordial PC builds are now 25% off, and you can even finance your purchase as well, so you can buy what you want now and pay later with Brett. Head to my link in the description, and also don't forget to use code HIDDEN at checkout for up to 250 bucks off your order. Perfectly fit for the Flood Apocalypse. Okay, so everything that we've discussed so far is all well and good, right? But what happens if all initial attempts at containing the outbreak fail, and it's left to fester? Well, one of the biggest problems that we're going to be facing is Flood Spores contaminating the air, starting in Blightlands, but slowly expanding out as the Flood spread. Now, it goes without saying, but the Flood Parasite becoming airborne is a pretty major problem for the civilian population. But the real question is, could modern infantry actually fight in spore-heavy environments where the parasite is airborne? You know what? Honestly, I think they could. Don't get me wrong, extreme, extreme decontamination procedures would have to be taken once a mission into a blightland or a spore-heavy zone is done to ensure that all the spores that are stuck to equipment or clothing are destroyed and aren't brought into safe zones. But I think that modern day NBC gear and gas masks and the like would actually be more than suitable to combat the flood. I mean, flood spores are honestly useless unless they make contact with the skin or are inhaled, which sounds quite hard to avoid, but spores are actually a lot bigger than you think. I mean, the mere fact that you can actually see flood spores in the air means that they're more than big enough for gas mask filters to filter out, and I, I doubt that they'd be able to work their way through any NBC gear and go through it and get on your skin, seeing as, at least as far as we know, spores have no corrosive properties. I actually don't think that flood spores would really prove much of a threat to modern militaries, of course, if the correct safety precautions were taken. The real problems would stem from if a Blightland or a Hive was basically left to spread out of control. If an outbreak gets to the point where an entire city, state, or god forbid, entire country gets consumed, then 
I don't think hollow points and flamethrowers are really going to cut it anymore. Larger action is definitely needed. I mean, this is the case in the Halo universe, so it's absolutely going to be the case in our world as well. If a modern day outbreak hits this point, if you want even the slightest chance at stopping it from consuming the entire planet, then I think your only course of action is to start using big, big bombs. Even more so if the flood evolved from the feral stage to the coordinator stage revolution and God forbid, start making a grave mind. Now, obviously, nuclear weapons would be the best bet to use against the Flood. I mean, they're effective against the Flood in Halo, per the Upsilon cryptonym, and so they'd of course be effective against the Flood in our timeline as well. But I like to think of nukes as something of a last resort. I think we all know the destructive capability of modern airstrikes, drone strikes, and artillery, and you know what? For the sake of keeping that monetization icon green, I don't think I'm going to elaborate any further on that. Needless to say, large-scale explosives that are used today would be absolutely effective against the Flood. However, if a grave mind is formed, then I think the nuclear option is the only option at that point. Trying to attack a grave mind or a grave mind in its entire own blightland through any infantry or ground mediums is just ridiculous, and I highly doubt that any military, regardless of how ignorant they are about the Flood compared to you know, me and you who have been playing Halo for a very long time would ever consider it over just nuking the area to high hell. Now, clearly, there's something pretty major that we haven't covered yet. Vehicles. It goes without saying that a high explosive tank shell would annihilate any pure form or even proto grave mind. And I think it also goes without saying that a vehicle mounted Browning 50 cal or 12.7 millimeter DSHK could easily tear through probably hundreds, if not thousands, of combat forms. It's also a given that modern vehicles, I mean, hell, even vehicles in the Halo universe are really easy for the Flood to commandeer, either by infecting the crew or by just piloting them themselves using the knowledge that they've assumed from their infected hosts. Ground vehicles don't really need that much explaining, but air vehicles, see, they're the interesting ones. At face value, it seems like something like a, I don't know, like an A-10 Warthog strafe run over a concentrated area of infection or a Blightland or a Hive would be ultra effective, and uh, yeah, face value it might be, but that doesn't take into consideration the Flood's rarely encountered yet pretty efficient anti-air capabilities. Infected birds are turned into lethal flood swarms. Cedar pods act as airborne explosive infection forms that can infect an entire air vehicle and its crew in seconds, and you know, that's not even considering the anti-air weaponry that the flood combat forms will have scavenged from infected hosts and overrun bases. I think air attacks would be viable outside of a flood hive when the flood are, say, moving in large hordes or gathered in an uninfected area, but attacking a hive or a blightland would be extremely dangerous given the biomass defenses the flood can also create in there as well. I mean, large towers like spore mountains that launch projectiles and dense clouds of spores would make mincemeat of any kind of circling helicopter or hell, even an Osprey or maybe even like an AC-130 I can see it being pretty effective against as well. And they'd make any kind of air-based infiltration of ground troops almost impossible. I mean, helicopters are practically sitting ducks when they're dropping troops off. And troops descending via parachute? I mean, are you crazy? That's about as effective as injecting yourself with flood super cells. It just makes me even more adamant that any kind of ground assault into a Blightland or a Hive nowadays would just be a complete fool's errand. I mean, at that point, if there's a Blightland or a Hive formed, I think the nuclear option is the only option. So, the bottom line. Would modern military and civilian gear be able to quell a flood outbreak if one occurred today? Well, let's summarize. A large majority of standard issue military ammo in both the East and the West would be mostly ineffective against most flood forms thanks to its focus on penetration over initial impact damage. That said though, despite also having too heavy an emphasis on penetration, higher caliber rounds like 7.62 NATO for example would be effective against the flood when fired in large numbers thanks to their raw power. Remember, the name of the game with the flood is sheer force which those heavier rounds absolutely have regardless of penetration value. Modern day shotgun shells, in particular Buckshot and Dragon's Breath, would be pretty effective for the same reason that they are in Halo, and luckily for us, 
The former, at least, are highly abundant and can be distributed among militaries and civilians with relative ease. Hollow points and hollow point derivatives like rip rounds would be the most effective modern conical bullet against most regular foot forms thanks to their emphasis on initial impact over penetration. Modern NBC clothing and protection would, I think, be surprisingly effective at preventing infection via spores should the flood go airborne. The mounted 50 cal GPMGs on Humvees and LAVs, and of course the main cannons on tanks, would be highly lethal against even the bigger flood forms like tanks, juggernauts, and proto grave mines. But the vehicles and their crews, however, would be highly susceptible to flood infection, just as they are in Halo. Strafe runs with aircraft like the A-10 Warthog would be really effective outside of hives, but within hives and blightlands, they'd be far too risky thanks to the Flood's anti-air defenses and infection capabilities. Modern payloads and weapons of mass destruction would be extremely lethal against large Flood hordes, formations, hives, and blightlands. Overall, the best chance that we'd have at quelling an outbreak would be catching it as early as possible. Ideally, while it's still in the feral stage of evolution and has no central intelligence guiding it. If containment teams were sent into ground zero fast, then I think that we would have a chance at stamping out the infection, but should that fail and the flood begin transforming an area into a blightland or a hive, well, carpet bombs or napalm would also, I think, be an extremely effective modern counter. But should that fail and the flood advance to the coordinator stage and form a grave mind, well, at that point, nukes really would be our only option. Honestly, when you weigh it all up, I actually do think that modern equipment and weaponry would be effective enough at countering the flood to contain an outbreak. The only problem is that a lot of what is effective, at least in terms of small arms specifically, isn't exactly standard military issue. With the exception of buckshot, incendiary shells, flamethrowers, and hollow points are rare, if not non-existent within militaries. At least officially. And although they could be distributed among ground forces, how quickly that could actually be done would be the real deciding factor. If entire ground forces were kitted out with rip rounds, flamethrowers, and incendiary munitions, well, I actually think they might have a chance at turning the tide on an outbreak quite early. However, if they're sent in with 556 and 545 FMJ, well, gonna have a bad time. Now, tell me in the comments, and I want you to be honest here. Do you honestly think that you could survive a flood outbreak? You know, I'd hazard a guess that us guys and girls are probably the most flood informed people on the planet. So at the very least, we've got that going for us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this hopefully fingers crossed forever hypothetical scenario video. If you want to see more videos like this, I don't really know what I'd do. But if you do want to see more like this in the future, then leave your thoughts and suggestions down below in the comments. So I want to give a massive thank you to Commander Wolf 104 and Wrath of Vardra for becoming new iconic ones over on Patreon. My friends, thank you very, very much. You know, if I dare say so myself, Pretty iconic of you. Pretty iconic of you. Thank you very, very much. And also, massive thank you to everyone else who continues to support me over there as well. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to keep those air filters clean in case you, you know, see a spore in the air. Don't forget. And I'll catch you all in the next one.